welcome to Smart Learning Academy, myself Madhushri Dutta and I am educator of SLA. Since you all know that we run the free crash courses on various life science exams, we have just not stopped on it. We are bringing the molecular tools and the technique lessons absolutely free of cost on our YouTube platform. And uh, to your information, we are also starting the gate crash courses that would be taken by me and the other top educators. So if you are preparing for gate, do join us and make your dreams come into reality as sir says. We will be starting with the second lesson of the molecular diagnostic techniques that would be on PCR modifications. So what are the modifications of the PCR? It's RT-PCR, real-time PCR, nested PCR, inverse PCR, anchored PCR race and the RAPD and ALP which are also known as molecular markers. So RAPD and ALP we will discuss in a separate lesson which would involve other molecular markers as well. So now let's come to the modifications of PCR one by one. Let's start with RT-PCR. So what is RT-PCR? RT-PCR is basically used to isolate identify and amplify a known sequence from a cellular or tissue RNA. So it involves a use of a particular enzyme known as reverse transcriptase to reverse transcribe the RNA into cDNA. This is what basically it is being doing and nowadays you must be knowing that it is well known for because of one of the major reasons that is COVID-19. Now let's come to real-time PCR. So real-time PCR is basically used to amplify and simultaneously quantify the target DNA molecule. So it cannot distinguish between the sequences but it can quantify and amplify at the same time a target DNA molecule by using certain fluorescent probes like Cybergreen, Tacman, Molecular Bacons and Scorpions. The next one is nested PCR where we use the two sets of primers and the second primer will bind just downstream of the first primer. So what is the basic use of the nested PCR? It is used to increase the specificity of the DNA amplification by preventing the non-specific amplification of the DNA. Now let's get into its figure for proper understanding of this one by one. So as you can see, we extract the RNA from the cells, then we reverse transcribe into the cDNA and then we perform the PCR with the thermostable DNA polymerase in the RT-PCR. And the next diagram is for the real-time PCR where the respective use of the molecule, uh, where the respective use of the fluorescent probes and their utility is being explained explained one by one. The first one we see is a cyber green which binds to the double standard DNA molecule and simultaneously it helps to quantify how much amount of DNA is present in the sample. The next one we see the TACMAN tac probes. So basically the use of the TACMAN probes, molecular backgrounds, this all involves the two things. One is a fluorophore and a quencher. So when a quencher is just adjacent to the fluorophore, it will prevent the fluorophore from fluorescence. So this, this two should be at the distance from each other for one to fluorescence. That's the fluorophore can only fluorescence when quencher is at a distance from the fluorophore. And thus it helps to show how a primer is playing an important role in the amplification of a transcript. The next one is the nested PCR. As we, as I have discussed a little earlier that the nested PCR involves the sets of two primer and the, as you can see the second primer just binds downstream of the first primer. This one is the inverse PCR. So let's talk about the inverse PCR basically. So the inverse PCR in our diagram we can understand a little better. So the, in the inverse PCR we see that the known DNA is being flanked by the unknown DNA. So if we do the restriction digestion and self-circularize it, circularize and self-ligate it, then we will see that the known sequence comes in between and we design the two primers in the opposite directions 
such that the known sequence after the restriction digestion of the circular fragment comes at the ends. The one that we are left with is anchored and res. In case of anchored PCR, only one primer is used instead of two. So one primer copies one strand, then we will add a poly GTL at the 3' end of the new strand and which would definitely act as a template and then we will attach a poly C to the primer which would bind to the poly G of the template. So let's move into the diagram for a better understanding. So as we can see this is a DNA synthesis is being carried out by using only one primer. By using only one primer we are carrying out the DNA synthesis then we are adding the poly G into the newly formed DNA template and this is the template with the poly G at the 3 dash end and then we design a primer with the poly G poly C bounded primer which will bind and carry out the further process. Similarly in the race which is used to locate the start and the end points of the transcript and it has been divided into two types that is 5 prime rays and 3 prime rays both are performing the similar functions but at different directions for the 5 prime rays it's different for the 3 prime rays is different but the process is almost similar this is what we see in case of the 5 prime rays where our primer will bind internally and carry out the synthesis of complementary DNA then there will be a synthesis of the poly A tail using terminal transferase and the denaturation and further annealing of the primer and the extension process will take place. So this is what we have discussed in today's lecture about the modifications of the PCR. So if you have any doubt do leave in the comment sections and let's wait for the next lecture what we have need to deliver. So we have come to the conclusion of the first lecture. Don't forget to like the video, share and subscribe and do drop down a feedback what video do you want us to make next. Thank you.